Tonight, humans aren't the only ones who need blood. A local blood center says supply for dogs has been dangerously low all summer. Now a Category 1 Hurricane Dorian has its eye set on the U.S. And the future is closer than you may think in San Antonio. Testing for driverless vehicles could be coming to our streets. But first... Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 live here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Courtney Friedman. Well, it won't be an easy fight, but Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the city will do whatever it can to get pharmaceutical companies to pay up for causing the opioid epidemic here in San Antonio. This after city council members unanimously decided to join thousands of other jurisdictions across the country in a national lawsuit. Bear County also filed a similar suit seeking a billion dollars, but right now it's still unclear how much the city is seeking. The mayor says lawyers are still assessing the cost of damages. In the meantime, attorneys are working under a contingency agreement, meaning they only get paid if the money is awarded. A trial date has not yet been set. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center still trying to bring in hundreds of blood donations before the Labor Day holiday holiday, but humans aren't the only ones facing this issue. Man's best friend is also in need and they're depending on other dogs. This summer, the blood supply for dogs has been especially low. Sarah Costa spoke with a local veterinarian who explains the problem and how the community can help. So we're going to get Scooby set up um, to basically see if he can be a blood donor for us. Just like us, our four-legged friends count on blood supply donations. When they experience trauma or need surgery, they depend on blood donated from other dogs. Local veterinarian Dr. Leslie Bauer says pet emergency hospitals count on bags of blood that are shipped to them from three dog blood banks in the country. But with a national shortage, Bauer says sometimes they have to wait three to four weeks for those shipments to come in and supplies are limited. Um, so we try to have a donor pool available so that we can call on those dogs and say, listen, you know, I have this dog available. I don't have blood in hospital. Can you come in and, and see if your dog's able to donate? Dr. Bauer says at emergency pet clinic, it's ideal for them going into a weekend to have at least five bags of blood available. But she says there are instances like today where only one bag is left. Having blood in supply is crucial to saving dogs lives. For example, Rowdy was bit by a rattlesnake this weekend. He needed two procedures that required two bags of blood, which saved him. There's definitely other emergency clinics in town too, and so we all kind of talk to each other, and you know, if we don't have it, we'll send you up to another facility with that. Um, all of us are using donors intermittently right now just to keep up with what we need. Can you hop up? up, up. To donate, your dog must be 50 pounds. First, your dog gets a physical exam. Blood types differ for dogs, but if they have a negative blood type, they are a universal donor. The dog's blood is also tested to make sure they are disease free. If they pass, your dog could become a monthly donor to save another dog's life during a critical time. Our hope is to get enough of a pool and have enough of those animals that we don't have to get into that situation. Good boy. Thank you, sir. Now, depending on the dog's size, about half of a liter of blood is drawn from them with either little or no sedation. If you are interested in seeing if your dog can help out, Dr. Bauer suggests talking to your local veterinarian about the process. Courtney. Thank you, Sarah. Now let's turn to the nine at nine. These are some of the most interesting stories making headlines around the world, the country and right here at home. A local woman cut with a knife during a fight overnight. Facebook has new rules for political ads and a TV personality dies in a crash trying to beat her own world record. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. Police in North Carolina say 19-year-old Paul Steber spent months planning a mass shooting. Steber, a High Point University student, was found with two guns and ammo in his dorm room. The school says they were told about the weapons by another student. Court documents show Steber has also been researching and watching videos related to mass shootings for months. In Georgia, police have arrested a man they say may have been attacking women for years. 24-year-old Kenneth Bowen III is facing several rape charges. Police say the victims are between the ages of 19 and 39 and lived within two miles of his home in south of Atlanta. DNA evidence linked Bowen to at least eight sexual assaults. Investigators say they've been looking for him since 2015. San Antonio police say 18-year-old Aaron Rongel is facing an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon charge after a stabbing. It happened around 10 p.m. Tuesday night on El Paso Street. Police say Rongel got into a fight with a woman and pulled a knife. She was cut and had to be taken to the hospital. San Antonio police are trying to find a man they say stole a trailer with a generator on it without even leaving his truck. 
It was on July 5th, police say a man in a Ford Explorer took off with the trailer on Valley High Drive. Police say he simply drove in front of it, hitched it to his truck and took off. There's a cash reward available for information leading to his arrest. Race car driver and TV personality Jesse Combs has died in a crash. Combs was known as the fastest woman on four wheels after setting a world speed record with a jet powered car. She died trying to break her own record. Combs has also co-hosted the TV shows Mythbusters and Overhaulin. She was 36 years old. The governor of New York says the state is decriminalizing marijuana. More than 200,000 marijuana convictions will be sealed because of a new law that's now in effect. That means more than 24,000 people will no longer have a criminal record. Plus, criminal penalties have been eliminated for public possession of less than two ounces. There is now a $50 fine for anyone caught with less than an ounce. Facebook is rolling out stricter rules for political ads. The social network says the move comes after it caught some advertisers trying to cheat the system. It says they were misleading users about who was funding the ads. The new system requires advertisers to submit credentials to obtain a Facebook verified label on ads. And a second option would indicate less confidence in the advertiser's identity. The new policies go into effect next month. A giant explosion from the Italian volcano known as Stromboli sent people running for cover Wednesday. The volcano was located on a small island outside of Sicily. So far, no injuries have been reported from the eruption. Fitbit is hoping its latest smartwatch feature will bring in more money. The company is rolling out a new subscription service called Fitbit Premium. With it, you'll be able to access thousands of workouts and health reports you can give your doctor. The service launches in September at $9.99 a month. To read more about these nine stories, just head to ksat.com slash news at nine. Well, Dorian now forecast to be a Category 3 hurricane by the time it reaches the Florida coast. As ABC's Maggie Ruley reports, people across Florida have been preparing, filling sandbags and emptying store shelves. Hurricane Dorian lashing the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico on Wednesday, strengthening to a hurricane as it moved past Puerto Rico, dumping torrential rains on the island. With memories of Hurricane Maria's devastation nearly two years ago still fresh on their minds, residents there were taking no chances. But officials say this time around, they were better prepared. It is the first system of the year, and we understand that the island is still very fragile. The so-called dirty side of the storm whipping past the Virgin Islands, bringing with it winds of at least 80 miles per hour and several inches of rain, knocking out power to tens of thousands. Forecasters now predict Dorian could grow to a Category 3 hurricane by the time it reaches the coast of Florida over the weekend. Bottom line is that we have a very, very serious hurricane threat to the state of Florida. Florida residents filling up sandbags while officials Officials there are testing water pumps and emptying canals. Residents should make sure that emergency equipment such as uh, hurricane shutters and battery powered radios are in good working order. Store shelves emptied as Floridians prepared. And I'm not that concerned, but I think it's better to be safe than sorry. Dorian already taking its toll on travel. Cruise ships have altered their routes and airlines have already begun canceling flights. Maggie Bruley, ABC News, New York. Florida preparing the best yeah. they can, so obviously they're really expecting some big storms. And truly the whole state is inside the cone of uncertainty, all the way from South Florida and Miami, really up to Southern Georgia. So a lot of people kind of on edge watching Dorian very closely. Here's the latest on Category 1 Hurricane Dorian. It's maximum sustained winds up to 80 miles per hour tonight. It is now moving away from land and all it has out in front of it are the very warm waters of the eastern Atlantic Ocean. And that's why strengthening is anticipated over the next few days. So we'll be watching this toward the end of the week. Weekend. Here's Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, expected to be a Category 3 hurricane. Again, there's nothing in its way here. Dorian really has the green light to continue to strengthen as it approaches Florida. And here's kind of what I was talking about, the cone of uncertainty. It just covers the whole state of Florida. That's a huge population that is really unsure what's going to happen as the weekend approaches. And the thing about the cone of uncertainty, we see these all the time with tropical systems. The cone of uncertainty is used to show uncertainty in the forecast. So the further out in time we get, the further down the line we go, that cone gets wider and wider, indicating uncertainty in the forecast. Because as we get further away from where we are right now, 
the confidence of exactly where the center of that storm is going to go really goes down. So our eyes typically follow those icons that are in the center of the cone. But the true thing about the cone of uncertainty, anywhere from this edge over to that edge there, the center of the storm could go anywhere along that line as we get closer to four, five days out. So that's what's really interesting about the cone of uncertainty, and that's why Florida is on edge and a lot of people have to watch this system. Uh, and the cone is also kind of dictated by the spaghetti plots or the forecast models, and uh, those do typically bring it through the central eastern uh, coast of Florida there. So this is something that we'll continue to keep you updated on, and I'll be back in just a few minutes to give you a better look at what we're looking at here at home. Of course, we're not concerned about Dorian. We could use a little bit of rain. We'll talk about what Labor Day weekend has in store. Okay, thank you so much, Kate. You're welcome. San Antonio is looking to steer a new technology onto the streets and test it out before it merges into the mainstream. Brooks, the former Air Force base turned mixed use development on the southeast side, would be the planned site of a pilot program for self-driving vehicles. The city's chief innovation officer said it is jumping in with Brooks and Via Metropolitan Transit for this program. It would consist of two autonomous shuttles driving routes by the Brooks Transit Center, providing transportation for the first or last part of their bus trip. The intent is to get the program started before the end of the year. So the end goal for our, all of our pilot projects or prototypes within these innovation zones when it comes to emerging technologies is to test it out, see if it's successful, see if it impacts our communities in a positive manner, and if they do, be able to scale them out throughout the rest of the city. Though Dillard says this is the first time autonomous vehicles would hit San Antonio public streets, the Southwest Research Institute has been researching autonomous vehicles on its campus since 2006 and would also be involved. Here in San Antonio, some East Central ISD parents say their children have been riding overcrowded buses since the school year started, sometimes not even getting a seat. East Central ISD officials released a statement in response to growing concerns. It read in part, quote, students are not allowed to stand or block exits while the bus is moving. All overloads from last week were addressed on Monday and changes have gone into effect. Drivers are instructed to report overloads if they occur, end quote. But some parents say they haven't seen any improvement. There's a lot of kids here. The neighborhood over here, between both of these neighborhoods, there's a lot of kids. And we just want our kids to be safe. That's a long travel. Part of East Central ISD statement said today also stresses, quote, the buses are not allowed to move if they are overloaded. Parents are encouraged to contact the district's transportation department for more information. Labor Day is almost upon us, which means travelers will need to pack a bit of patience, whether they're driving or flying this weekend. What to know before heading out the door next. Plus, a Democratic presidential candidate has dropped out of the race. The reason why, coming up. Considered the unofficial end of summer, the Labor Day holiday is one of the busiest travel weekends of the year. Whether you're flying to your Labor Day destination or driving there, you should prepare for large crowds. According to TripAdvisor, 61% of those traveling will be hitting the road, while 27% will be flying. 
this year, over one third of Americans will be traveling for that last long weekend in summer. Try to leave a little bit earlier than you normally would or even later in the day to help avoid some of those busy traffic roadways and long lines at the airport. No matter how you're getting there, keep these two key dates in mind. TripAdvisor says Thursday, August 29th and Tuesday, September 3rd will be the busiest days. But if you can't avoid them, remember to be patient. Let's turn now to some of the biggest stories people are talking about around America. Democrat Kristen Gildebrandt is dropping out of the presidential race. The 52-year-old New York senator announced her decision today on Twitter as her campaign was plagued by low polling and fundraising struggles. She'd failed to meet thresholds for required numbers of donors and polling to qualify for the September debate in Houston. In five years, drivers in Illinois will have another option to select on their state ID other than male or female. The third option will be called non-binary. It will require major overhaul with the way IDs are issued, including changing the way they're numbered. Meanwhile, critics want genders taken off the licenses altogether. FBI and IRS agents have raided the Michigan home of a big labor union leader Wednesday. Agents could be seen at the residence of the United Auto Workers president, Gary Jones. The raid is apparently connected to a federal investigation into corruption in the auto industry. Investigators have been looking into possible kickbacks and bribes. No word on how Jones is involved and what the FBI is looking for. The Texas Veterans Commission is doing its part to support veterans in our community. Today, the organization awarded nearly $2 million in federal funds to eight different organizations and programs. The Veterans Commission says the money will be used for things like mental health counseling, substance abuse, and housing. In this area, we have uh, money for housing for Texas Heroes. We have general assistance grants. We also have grants for mental health programs. And we also fund the veteran treatment courts and other um, veteran county services. The commission says the veterans they typically serve are men. They're working on new research, out, a new outreach program for women to make sure all veterans are taken care of. The San Antonio Food Bank is also receiving a large donation today. Starbucks gifting $100,000 to the food bank as a part of its Feeding America campaign. The donation is part of a larger pledge of $1.5 million dedicated to more than a dozen food banks across the country. The food bank says the donation will help provide about 700,000 meals to those in need. Okay, I swear I didn't plan this, but we are going to start off with the coffee cast. Oh my gosh, for that's perfect. <laughs> for tomorrow morning. Um, and I hate to like, as a coffee person, I don't want to like tell you what size coffee to make or order. I can only give suggestions. Okay. Because I don't want to. I feel like you're being super offensive. <laughs> I guess I'm like XL coffee every day, three cups every morning. But we put together a, what we call a little coffee cast here. So based on what our weather is going to be like in the morning, are you going to need a little extra pick me up or is it going to be so beautiful outside? The birds will be chirping, all that jazz. Well, tomorrow it's going to be another warm and muggy morning, mostly cloudy skies to start. So that's why I think you may need the large cup of coffee. But if you want to go XL, 
sell or venti or whatever. <laughs> You do you, you do you. We're gonna carry more clouds through the first part of the day tomorrow. By lunchtime, seeing more sunshine, temperatures climbing into the low 90s, looking to top out around 99 tomorrow afternoon with just another 10% chance of a stray shower or non-severe storm. We actually had a few of those out there this afternoon and this evening. They were primarily east of I-35 and then south of San Antonio, but a few more little stray thunder showers not out of the question, not only tomorrow and into Friday, but also into Labor Day weekend, but really, the holiday weekend forecast is looking pretty good. We don't have triple digits. It's still going to be hot and humid. I'm looking pretty good. A mix of sun and clouds each day and just a 10% chance of a stray shower or storm. But coverage is going to be so low that I do not expect it to impact any plans that you may have for the upcoming holiday weekend. So here's how things look heading into Labor Day on Monday. Not a whole lot of change here. We're really not shaking things up very much. High temperatures will be staying in the mid to upper 90s through the upcoming holiday weekend. Court. So if I'm not that much of a coffee person, can I get a tea forecast like yes. chamomile or green tea? Oh, yes. Or black tea if I'm feeling like I need a lot of caffeine. I love black tea. Me yes. Too. OK, a large. Up next. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Now let's take a look at what's trending on KSAT.com with RJ Marquez. All right, Courtney, interesting mix of stories tonight. And uh, let's start first with a pretty uh, interesting story about bananas possibly going extinct. What? I know, it's uh, hard to believe, but apparently there is a deadly fungus that has made its way from Southeast Asia to parts of South America. Oh, wow, and this is it's serious. Affecting. This is a pretty big deal yeah. here, yes. Now, uh, fortunately, there are experts and biologists that say that they think they can quarantine this in oh South America. Gosh. but uh, it is maybe going to cause the rise of bananas, uh, the cost of that here yeah. in the United States. So, yes, as a big uh, banana fan, I this know. is definitely a little uh, worrisome. Yeah, what are we going to do with our smoothies? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, hopefully they'll be Amongst able to figure that things. quarantine out. Yeah, Banana definitely. Banana quarantine. Um, yeah, and if you want uh, more information on this, go to KSAT.com. All right, switching gears a little bit here. Uh, so a Ooh. this movie, The Joker, it will mm -hmm. be coming out uh, here pretty soon. I believe it's September 4th that okay. this is supposed to come out. Um, and the final trailer was released today. This is with Joaquin Phoenix. And it is creepy as all get... <laughs> <laughs> I don't weird. even want to watch it. Yeah. I know people have been talking about mm -hmm. it. I'm just kind yeah. of like, ah, might sit this one out. Yeah, I think this <laughs> is kind of more of a uh, like a psychological kind mm -hmm. of disturbing type of Joker that we're seeing here. I know director Patrick says that he thinks it could live <laughs> up to the Heath Ledger Joker. So oh my gosh, I'm a big Heath Ledger fan, mm -hmm. so it would take a lot, but also I feel like this is different. It's right. a different feel, it's right. a little more creepy. Absolutely, this trailer's been getting a lot of attention today. We have it on this article on KSAT.com. Make sure you check that out. All right, uh, sticking kind of with the entertainment movie business, okay. and uh, I knew this story would get your attention, Courtney, as a Texas alum, as a Texas yes. ex, Matthew McConaughey officially a film professor at UT. Your thoughts? I have so many thoughts. Number one, 
Yeah. Why did this not happen when I was there? <laughs> That's, this num this, so the number one thought is yeah. jealousy. Mm -hmm. um, number two thought is really cool experience yeah. for the students there because it, it, UT has yeah. a really good journalism school Absolutely. which I was lucky to be yeah. with but their radio television film classes are already incredible yeah so and uh, this, this sounds really cool apparently stellar. he's already been assisting in this class this is called a script to screen so basically students are gonna be able to watch the movie with him and then have him kind of uh, give them his analysis of it uh, afterwards so Really interesting, really cool. Matthew McConaughey, he was named the Minister of Culture, I think, last year, right? Yeah, For the yeah. athletics department. Mm -hmm. He gives the speeches to the football team. He's on the sideline at basketball games, and now yeah. he's going to be in class. He's an integral part, and he's a good cheerleader for, for <laughs> yeah, UT. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I'm just curious how kids are going to be stampeding to get into that class. I could imagine, yeah, Shock. definitely. I would be... I would be surprised if yeah. people weren't running towards that Absolutely, classroom. Absolutely, yeah. Um, okay. If you want more information on this story and everything else on our website, head to ksat.com. That is what is trending tonight. Troy. Thank you, RJ. We'll be right back. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Fitbit has announced its newest smartwatch, the Versa 2. The device comes with Amazon Alexa and five days of battery life. The watch can also track your sleep and will give users a score based on the average data it collects. Fitbit's new Apple Watch competitor will launch September 15th, starting at $200. The company also announcing the launch of a new health subscription service called Fitbit Premium. This will give users access to personalized coaching, including health reports, workouts, and sleep features. In other news, federal regulators are taking a step toward allowing mirrorless cars. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration plans to test cameras that could replace the traditional rear view and side mirrors. Major car makers are pushing for the technology, arguing that cameras are better than human eyesight. The Alliance of Automobile Manufacturers filed a petition to use camera-based systems back in 2014. Europe and Japan already allow mirrorless cars. And more airlines are banning MacBook Pros. The crackdown, a result of concerns that some laptops and checked luggage could catch fire. Some airlines, like Qantas, are banning specific versions of the MacBook, and others, like Virgin Australia, are going even further, banning all Apple laptops from checked luggage. Apple recalled certain of the 15-inch MacBooks after the company found the battery could overheat and catch fire. And that's your Tedder Business and Tech Update. I'm Hope King from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Thank you so much for joining us for the News at 9 here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. Be sure to check us out for the Night Beat. Starts at 10.